Welcome to Thoughts from the Throne. And I want to start with my good and bad thoughts to begin with. My good thoughts are this. Tomorrow, I leave to go to the UK, and I haven't been there in four years. I'm going to be in Glasgow, I'm going to be in Manchester, and I'm going to be in London. And I'm excited to be there representing TNA and doing a, a bunch of Impact Wrestling television tapings. And I'm excited to see all my UK fans and friends that I haven't seen in many, many years. My bad thoughts are uh, there's a, a terrible storm headed to the Northeast right now. Uh, uh, they're calling it a historic blizzard. And I know a lot of people are going to be in jeopardy. They're going to be without electricity, without heat, and it could be a very dangerous situation. And what I want to wish each and every one of you that are watching this online, I want to wish my social media family the best of luck. And I hope you all stay warm and stay safe. Be smart. And uh, I hope the storm passes very quickly. Now, let's get to the pink elephant in the IWC. And that is the feedback that came in from the Royal Rumble last night. Now, I'm not going to be judgmental because I didn't see the Royal Rumble. I actually haven't watched the event. I can't tell you if it was good or bad. I can only comment on what I've read and the feedback that I've got online about the Royal Rumble. I know a lot of fans are up in arms because Daniel Bryan was in early and he was eliminated quickly. And then Roman Reigns won. Roman Reigns won the match. Uh, thinking about that, it, it just seems that Daniel Bryan is a gift and a curse to the WWE. It's a gift to be a performer that is over like that, that connects with all, all the fans on such an intense, deep level. And to go out there, that, that's what you want. That, that's the kind of performer you dream about having, someone that the fans are that so far behind that they'll walk through hell and high water with. And the fans will do that with Daniel Bryan. That is a blessing to the WWE. The reason it's a, it's a curse is because that guy... Uh, cannot always be your champion. He cannot always win. He cannot always be the centerpiece of every event you have. And sometimes for the fans, that is hard for them to understand. Uh, looking at this in hindsight, I guess, and, and I don't see why WWE wouldn't have seen this going into the event, if you weren't going to have Daniel Bryan play a prominent and featured role in the Royal Rumble, if you weren't going to utilize him in a certain way and, and actually promote him in a certain light, I don't know why he didn't wait to return until after the Royal Rumble, because uh, I think right there you're almost sabotaging the whole idea of Roman Reigns winning and having this huge moment and, and making the, the march to WrestleMania. Uh, you really have to have a pulse on the wrestling business in 2015. It's not just about good guys and bad guys and winning and losing. You have to appreciate the fans. You have to understand the fans have a greater knowledge. During the Attitude Era, the curtain was lifted, and the fans have a completely different access now in 2015 to information, and they know it's entertainment. They know what's going on, and as a promoter, you have to uh, integrate that into whatever your plans are, whatever your booking plans are. And with WWE, they can't insult the fans' intelligence. Because they know. They were notorious for doing that back in the day. They would take a wrestler and use him for a little while, kill him off, bring him back, repackage him into a totally different gimmick, and, and just start like he's never been on the show before. And, and you could get away with that years ago, but you can't now during this age of information. You really have to be on the pulse as a wrestling promoter of the business in 2015. I feel like I do a good job at that. Shane Helms, my best friend, who is booking Omega now, he does a great job at doing that. One person I really want to highlight right now is Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer has... His fingers on the pulse of wrestling fans better than anyone else I know of as a promoter. I'm going to go to use an example, the House of Hardcore, the, the last House of Hardcore event where myself and Jeff, the main event was the Hardy Boys versus the Young Bucks. And in that match, I'll be honest, and this is true, we went out to the ring without a finish. We didn't know how that match was going to end. We didn't know who was going to win and who was going to lose. Uh, Tommy had given us original plans to work with, and, and we followed his blueprint closely, but I I said I was going to gauge it off the fans. Now, to begin with, I'm going to wrestle different in front of a Philadelphia audience than I am in front of a South Carolina audience. I'm going to wrestle different in front of a New York audience than I am a, an audience in Omaha, Nebraska. It depends on where you're at, and that's the part of this art. It's live theater, and you have to cater to whatever fan base you're in front of. People love the Young Bucks. They are the Daniel Bryan of the territory scene, of the independents. People love those guys. They have this diehard cult following, and they've earned it because they are that talented. Daniel Bryan is talented, but he has earned all that love and respect he gets. The Young Bucks have as well. And we went out there. People loved the super kick parties. We gave them a super kick party. They super kicked my head off, and they hit me with their finish. And you know what? People bought it, they believed it, and they loved it. And that is what professional wrestling is all about in the year 2015. Thanks for joining me for Thoughts from the Throne. He's coming back. I got a family to feed. Get with it, boy.